Hey, what's up guys? I'm working on the engine assembly today. I've worked on this for a few days this week. Did some boarding and polishing to the heads. Really kind of just porting, not really doing any polishing. And uh, did some paint of the engine, painted the heads too, did a couple small things, and uh, just about ready to start reassembling this. As you can see, we've got pretty much everything off the motor here. Uh, timing cover's off, cylinder heads are off, oil pan is off too. I do need to get to these back um, bolts here to this back cover, so I'll have to pull that off once I get the engine off the hoist here, or off this engine stand. And then uh, first I'll have to put the heads on to do that. And so I figured I might as well start filming this here uh, to kind of show my thought process here or what I'm doing. I haven't done too much of this before, but um, this is definitely within my capabilities here. Uh, I'm going to be installing head studs this time. I have a set of ARP studs, so I'm going to use in this thing. And I haven't done that before, but we'll see how this goes. This should be pretty simple. And um, yeah, it should be fun. You'll get to watch the whole process here. So without further ado, I'm just going to go ahead and start um, reinstalling the heads here. Going to start with scraping off the gasket material here. You see there's still a lot on here. And just going to go ahead and start cleaning that up here. Got some new gaskets. So this should be, should be cool. All right, well, I've got these surfaces all cleaned up here. I scraped them with a razor blade. So we should be good to go ahead and reinstall the head studs. And I'm uh, gonna be using ARP head studs for this one. Uh, first time I've ever done them. So it should be a fun adventure. One of the things I've done here to kind of prep for the head studs is this sort of go ahead and clean up these thread holes. And I took a bolt here and just kind of cut some a slot in it. That way it can kind of clean up the holes here and get rid of all of the old uh, thread seal in here. And um, it's kind of important too because as you use a lot of head studs, each of these has some sort of thread seal in there and you get a lot of trash in the threads and this will make things start in there a lot easier. So it shouldn't be, uh, shouldn't require any effort at all to put these head studs in. So this is the kit I'm using. It's a ARP number 6569. And uh, these are head studs for a Buick uh, motor, basically any 300 Series 2 or Series 3 V6 as far as I know. And uh, this is what you get with it. It's some assembly lube, a sticker, some instructions, and some notices here too. These are the head studs themselves. And you're gonna have long ones and short ones. Uh, I got some washers, it looks like. And these are the nuts for them. And these are all the studs. Cool, awesome. It's good to see that they are, that was interesting. So we have multiple different threads here. And it uh, looks like the coarser thread goes into the block. So that's kind of cool to see. I've never actually worked with head studs before. So this is probably a common scenario here. I'm glad to see they have a stopping point to them because it seemed like these bolts could kind of just keep going through the water jacket and eventually just go all the way to, you know, whatever's on the other end of that. So this will be cool. Um, so the short ones, these are going to go on to the bottom of the heads. Um, if you're looking at the heads right here, you can see that this is where you have some bolts going. Some of them also go inside of here, so they're going to be just a little bit longer. So we'll go ahead and put these on there. Um, one of the things I did buy for this is uh, red RTV. I've heard a lot of people say mixed things about this. So some people say to use thread tape. Some people say to use RTV. Some people say to use thread sealer, like the liquid thread sealer. And um, it, it kind of seems like everyone has their own thoughts about what works. And I've heard that the liquid thread sealer doesn't work that well. And some people say to use the, the, the tape, and I don't have any of the tape, and I don't really know if I trust the tape that much to, to work with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use red RTV, or copper RTV, and just kind of cut all the, the bolts with that. Because these bolts go into the water jacket, and you can't really see it there, but as you get the hole through there, you can kind of see it peeking out here on the other end of this water jacket there. So they definitely, uh, will seep if you do not use any sort of RTV or any sort of thread sealer. So that's one thing I hope I don't run into. So I'm going to go ahead and use a pretty good amount of RTV. So I've heard you want to be pretty liberal with the amount of RTV you apply to it. So I'm going to coat all the threads with it and just kind of get it everywhere. That way you just have 
basically each thread is filled with it. And then I'll just kind of see what comes out of the, the heads as I put them in or inside the block. All right, so this, this stud is coated with the RTV. You can see it's kind of spread out through all the threads there. So that should be good to go. All right, so at this point I've got all the studs installed and they look really good. This is a really cool look. I'm really happy with it. I'll just need to uh, clean up some of this RTV around the, around the threads still. Then I'll go ahead and get those gaskets installed and uh, put the heads in. You know, one of the things that I found to be kind of interesting is that the head gaskets come in the left and right hand side here, at least for Velpro gaskets, and none of the local auto parts stores stock the left one. Yeah, that's the left one. And they all stock this one. So if you went to an auto parts store, you would need to get two of these and flip one of them, um, which I'm not sure if that makes the most sense, you know, but um, I got the proper ones this time, so I'm gonna go ahead and use these and um, yeah, the right-hand side will go on the right-hand side. If you're facing an engine from the front, this will be the right-hand side, and this will be the left-hand side. So the left one will go over there, and the right one, right one will go over here. Now, you might be asking me, why are you using Felpro gaskets when you have head studs? Well, it doesn't matter. And head studs are a good thing to have in general, just in case, you know? They're not torqued to re they're not torqued to yield like regular bolts are, so you can reuse these as many times as you want to. So it's kind of a good investment, especially if you know you're going to be using it in the future anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and lay this gasket down. I probably should have showed you that on the side. And I'll go ahead and lay this one in. All right, just like that. You want to lay this guy on top of here. And there she goes. Now, usually these will have an error on them, but you can kind of figure it out if you look at them as to where they go. Uh, I don't see arrows in these ones unless I'm just blind right now. But I know this is the top, obviously. And we're gonna have this layer facing out here. All right, so at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and install these heads. And uh, we should be good to go. We got the bolts on, we got the studs on, we got the gaskets on. So the heads are coming on next. And it doesn't matter which side you seal on because the heads are the same from left to right. Okay, now these are the head surfaces here. And um, you know, I've already cleaned these once before, but I'm just gonna go ahead and run my razor over them again, just to be sure there's nothing left on here, just sort of for my own peace of mind. Because it's been a, a few minutes since, since I actually cleaned these off. So I'll go ahead and do that here. 
Alright, so these heads are cleaned, they're good to be installed, I'm going to go ahead and do that now. All right, now that the heads are on here, I do want to point something out that I kind of did not show before. But um, one of the things I've learned here about these, these head studs is that you do want to make sure that they are down tight enough. Typically, people will say, you want to torque down head studs just finger tight. You don't need to put any sort of effort on them. But you do want to make sure that they're all the way engaged here in these engines. And because there's so much gunk in those threads, typically, because these are high, higher mileage engines, this one was not machined at all. It just came out of like a 200,000 mile car. Um, what I've done is I've torqued them down by hand a little bit just to make sure that these are far enough down that they need as they need to be because you don't want them going too far up because then they're going to run into your exhaust manifolds. You can see these ones are in pretty good shape here. They're not too high at all. That should be just what we need here. And they should not clear the bolt or the nut too much. And then the ones on the inside, that those don't matter too much because there's nothing that they're going to intrude with. They're just kind of sitting in there. She's looking good. <clears throat> so now this kit did come with some assembly lube, um, some sort of Maui lube it looks like. And um, what I'll go ahead and do for this is I'll insert it between the washer and the nut itself. That way it'll kind of give it some lubricant as it spins around in there, and that should be sufficient for it. So I've got the uh, head studs installed now. I've got the uh, nuts on there too. So I'm gonna go ahead and torque these down here. And one of the things that I've noticed here is that there's a lot of debate out there as to what you're gonna be torquing these down to because uh, different manufacturers and different websites have different torque specs in them. What I'm gonna go ahead and run with is what I've seen a lot, a lot of people do is just go to 35 foot pounds first and all of them, then go to 70 and then go to 85 and all of them too. Some people say I run as high as eight as 92 or something like that. That's probably probably too excessive. I think even ARP says just go to like 75. But I'm gonna go a little bit higher though, just because that's what everyone else is saying. So that's the plan. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. And again, you're gonna start the center here in these things and just kind of work your way around. I'm just gonna get a snug first before I go to my 35. Kind of just follow the same pattern that you would do from the factory. So I read my torque spec, so I should have done 45, 70, 85. I'm going to do 50, then 75, and then 85 just to be safe, you know. I'm gonna go ahead and do my final torque of 85 foot pounds. The next thing I need to do is get this engine off of this jack, off of this engine stand. 
so that way I can work on the oil pan and work on that that rear cover. The rear main seal's got to come off, and um, I can't do it with the engine stand with the with it on the engine stand. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take that off here. So go ahead and do that now. You know, I'm gonna check if these are a 10 or not. They're, they're a 10. This is the kind of thing that drives me nuts. Okay, so this is a 10, not, not, a, not a 3 8. It's unpredictable, man. Mmm, smells good. You know, when you can't find a pry bar, you can just use a little wrench. That'll do the job. Alright, so I've got this thing relatively clean now. I'm going to go ahead and start to install these new gaskets and the new uh, rear main seal. And the rear main sits on this guy right here. So I can go ahead and pull that out somehow. All right, I got my new main seal on here. It's pretty flat on all sides, so it should be good to go. Um, I'm kind of leery about this one because it is a Felpro. I've heard the Felpros just aren't as good as the AC Delco ones. But, you know, we're gonna find out the hard way. All right, I'm gonna go shove around like that because that's how the old one was on. Always remember to follow the uh, torque spec, and uh, for this engine, pretty much everything is just the Guten Tight spec. Um, that's the important one, so we're just going to run with that one here. And as long as you're following that, you should be good to go. And yep, yeah, Guten Tight, Guten Tight, Guten Tight, Guten Tight, Guten Tight, Guten Tight. Guten tight. Yep, she's all good and tight. I'm gonna put her back on the engine stand and go ahead and start in that oil pan. I'm gonna start by cleaning up the pickup tube. You know, this is another one of those situations where you really don't know what bolt size you have. I'm gonna tell you though, this is a 5 16 Almost everything else down here is a 3 8 Once again, torque tech, torque spec is good and tight. I guess before I do this, I need to install the front cover. The reason, the reason I need to do that is because I need to put in some RTV in here and on the front cover there. And I'd like to do it with the oil pan out still, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the front cover now. You know, it's a good idea to make sure that you've got this thing lined up here because there's only one pin here holding this gasket on. So you want to make sure you, you kind of hold it up as you put it on there. But I've got it started now and these are the two bolts that are, that'll kind of hang it for me while I get the rest of them on. But I'm not going to tighten anything too much until it's all on.
And uh, this one's just gonna go ahead, get installed just like that. There is a pin here that will, this will go into to help center this. So you don't need to worry too much about alignment here. Just make sure it goes in the pin and it goes in the bolt holes. And you should be all set. All right, here's the camshaft sensor. It goes right here, and as that camshaft spins around, it'll give some feedback in this thing. And, uh, All right, we're on the home stretch here. Gonna have to go ahead and put on the intake manifold, the balancer, water pump pulley, and uh, a couple other little things like um, taking off this masking tape. Don't wanna leave that on.
Now we're gonna do the intake manifold gaskets. These are AC Delco aluminum frame gaskets. These are kind of like the best there is for these engines. Uh, so they have a metal frame to them basically, so they'll never really go bad. And I've heard people were using these before, and I've done it before and haven't had issues, but I figured I'm gonna go ahead and uh, use new ones here because the last uh, I used them quite a few different motors, and I figured it's probably time to go ahead and uh, get a new set. Here we go. All right, well, I've got the rockers on here now and all the push straps too. And I tried to film this, but apparently my phone ran out of storage space. So I'm dealing with that right now. So some of, this, some of the uh, footage is missing here and I'm hoping to have that issue fixed soon. I have a GoPro in the way, so hopefully that'll solve the issue here. But I'm gonna go ahead and finish up here. I'm not gonna kind of go back at all. And um, should be, we're pretty much getting we're getting pretty close here. We're gonna put the intake manifold on, put the rockers on here, or the valve covers on, and uh, flywheel should, should be all set here. All right, so these are my valve covers. Now I've modified them to, uh, so they can have a breather in the back of them. So I've, got to, I've just gotta make sure I put the breather in the back of it, that way you can't see it. So on this one, it's on this side, so this one will go over here. And this one will go over here. All right, well here she is. She's all done. Uh, pretty much fully assembled here. I have a few small things to still finish up there, like the throttle body and some of the sensors. But overall though, she's pretty much done. Got all the core stuff here. Still need the flywheel. All right, now that's gonna do it for this video, guys. I'm gonna keep working on this thing. I have a few small things to sort of work out here. And then after that, I'm gonna get this thing in the car and hopefully have this fired up and running by the end of the week. I do have a few little things I need to work on though with it. The uh, AC compressor uh, belt here with its brackets needs some attention. I broke some of that stuff when I um, took the car for my last road trip. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and try and find a way to reinforce that and fix that before it's ready to run. And then uh, I'm trying to get the uh, L67 throttle body in here, and that's turning into more of a pain in the butt than I thought it would be. If you liked what you saw, of course, go ahead and hit that like button. I'm trying to see if I can get this channel to grow. 
I'm going to put a little bit more effort into it. And um, if there's things you guys want to see with this, just let me know. Well, that's going to do it for this video, guys. Hope you guys liked what you saw. If you did, just go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Um, but otherwise, yeah, thanks for watching.